Good evening, everyone. And once again, welcome to the Dead Vault Horror Show. I am forever your cult horror host, the Keymaster Slasher Poe. And tonight, my friends, I hope you have your shovels nice and sharp, as well as your popcorn all nice and buttery. <laughs> because tonight, we exhume a coffin classic out of the dead vaults, entitled Messiah of Evil. Indeed, join me as I unlock the dead vault and exhume this coffin classic. Indeed, a young woman goes to look for her missing father. Her trip takes her a strange detour to California's coastal city, ruled by a mysterious cult of walking dead. <laughs> Messiah of Evil is also shown under the title Dead People as a 1973 American supernatural horror film co-written and produced by Willard Hayek. <laughs> the production company International Sign Film Corporation put a budget on this film of over one million dollars. Well, my friends, get your shovels because it is time to exhume out of the dead vault Messiah of Evil. Enjoy this coffin classic, my ghoulies. Hello, boils and ghouls. It's me, John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> Well, kiddies, you're watching the Dead Vault Horror Show. And check out Chop Block TV at ButcherMedia.com for the best in horror entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> to the wind I told my story to the sea no one else is listening to me the hidden truth clear in my mind soon all alone I will not find somehow somewhere someone may Nightmares are dreams perverted. I've told them here it wasn't a nightmare, but they don't believe me. They nod and make little notes in my file, and they watch me now, waiting for me to scar my breasts, to eat insects maybe, or to lift my dress like some crazy old woman and urinate on the floor. 
But there's so little time left. You've got to listen. Not far from here, there's a small town on the coast. They used to call it New Bethlehem, but they changed the name to Point Dune after the moon turned blood red. Point Dune doesn't look any different than a thousand other neon stucco towns. But what happened there, what they did to me, what they're doing now, they're coming here. They're waiting at the edge of the city. They're peering around buildings at night. And they're waiting. They're waiting for you. And they'll take you one by one and no one will hear you scream. No one will hear you scream! I went there looking for my father. He used to spend winters in Point Dune painting. Then, after my mother died, he stayed, and his letters became our only contact. Until recently, when his letters became more and more bizarre and finally stopped. I have little time now. I can't write again, but you mustn't worry. And please, you must promise not to follow me. I'm afraid to see people anymore. It's better that I wait alone for it to come. out there. Nothing but quail and rabbits. Rabbits don't make that sound. That's Point Dune ahead, isn't it? Why do you want to go to Point Dune? I'm visiting somebody there. I can't understand why anybody would want to go to Point Dune. Visiting. I mean, it's just a piss poor little town. It's deader than hell. Lady, don't you have any cash? Well, no, but this is. That's all right, forget it. Oh, get out! Get 
get your uh, your stamps.
months left. I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. Visions are coming from areas of my mind that, that I don't understand. July 2nd. These grotesque images keep crowding in on me. At night I find myself wandering alone in town, catching glimpses of horrid animals I, I know can't be there. And along the dark beach, faces haunt me. Pale women with sleepless eyes and shadowy figures staring toward the black water. He didn't return that night. I walked along the beach in the morning, as I'm sure he must have, coming out of the nightmares he spoke of, back into the daylight. drove into town later. It was hot already. I saw an art gallery and I thought they might know my father. The art dealer was blind. Her fingers moved like a pale spider over my face. Lang? Do I know who he is? We do get magazines in Point Dune, which some of us can even read. Well, I meant I'm looking for him. And I thought maybe you knew him personally. Point Dune isn't an artist colony. I heard he did take people out there, mostly women. But they weren't from Point Dune. Uh, there were some people in this morning looking for your father, which means some people do like his brand of art. Who were they? I don't know. Strangers. I think they're staying at the Seven Seas. the hills. Mama delivered me herself. She took me from between her legs. Bloody little mess. Just about to feed me to the chickens. And Daddy said, maybe we could use a boy, Lottie. That's how I came into the world. Excuse me. They said at the gallery that you were looking for Joseph Lang. He's my father, and, and I just... Just come in and close the door. All I want to know is if you... Close the door. Go ahead, Charlie. It's hard to remember back on things, but I... I remember the red moon my daddy told me about only once. Mama gave him a bad look when he talked about it. He was only a boy himself then. He called it the blood moon. He said that was the night that he lost religion. He learned that men could do... could do horrible things. Like animals. I'm really hungry. I've got the munchies. <laughs> Shut up. Go ahead, Charlie. What about the moon? A hundred years ago, the moon started turning red up in the sky and things began to happen. It was like the red of the moon got up there. The closer the people were being jerked toward hell, where the people started bleeding out of control. They found children eating raw meat. 
It was like the town was festering with a, an open sore until the night that they... until the night they came down out of the canyon and... Who came down, Charlie? I gotta go. Charlie. Take the wine, Charlie. Well, thanks for your kindly hospitality. I'm looking for my father. Do you know him? I know of him. They told me at the gallery. I... We drove by the gallery this morning. I happened to see all his works in the window. I didn't know that he lived here. They didn't have any of his paintings there. Well, that's popularity. Because they did this morning. I offered to buy one, and the old woman said they weren't for sale. As a matter of fact, it was a portrait of you. Tom likes to collect things. Like old drunks? Fashion retort. <laughs> What's a retort? Tony, you're half girl, half child, and half wit. <laughs> <laughs> Sit on it, sister. Don't be afraid. I'm an ugly old man, but I'm harmless. It's about your daddy. They mustn't hear me. I got him fooled. I get drunk. Sleep on the sidewalk like a dog and he let me be. I ain't crazy. Not old Charlie. What about my father? You have to kill him. You're crazy. You can't bury him. Don't put him in the ground. You gotta burn him. You gotta put fire to his body. afternoon town asking about my father the reaction was always the same people would only stare or shake their heads and back away july 6th our lady called this morning i listened to her but couldn't let her know i was here my voice would have terrified her at times i make noises which don't seem human and my mind is letting go. I try to remember the past, my daughter, but I can't. Instead, I, I think of death. Always death.
trouble at the motel. You remember the old gentleman who was telling us the story? Of course I do. He was mad. Perhaps. But when they found him this afternoon, he was dead. The police came and questioned us. Needless to say, they weren't very understanding what with me and my two traveling companions. And then suddenly, every other motel locked and shuttered its windows. You're the only other person we know. What happened to the old man? They found his body in the alley. He must have passed out or something. The police theorized that it must have been dogs. Well, they found his body half-eaten. I let them stay. I never understood why. It was as if I'd come into a foreign town where I didn't speak the language. And was sharing a house with people I'd have never met in my other life. Would you like some more? Yes, thank you. the Mediterranean from Africa. I was born in Portugal, in a castle. I thought it was a villa in Spain. My mother was a Portuguese, an aristocrat. My father was rich and American. I have a castle that stands above the sea. One of our legends tells us. Tom, what are we doing in this shitty place? I don't know, really, as I was saying. Every race has their legends. The Romans, the Greeks, even the folk here in Point Dune had their stories. I'm interested in their story about the blood moon. doing here he didn't know anybody here he could paint has your father been painting long <laughs> laura's quite the art critic she used to model photographers mostly she specialized in exotic poses with snakes oh tom just gets so clever when he's trying to get into somebody's pants listen when you go to bed with me tonight why don't you let him see? Laura, I am tired of having to apologize for you. Yuck! This stuff is shitty tasting. You're not supposed to eat the fuzz. He said he was a collector of old legends. He thought my father knew something of the legend of Point Dune. I told him my father wasn't here. He said they could wait.
Are you lost? No. I've been walking. Have you seen the fires on the beach? No, I haven't. Good night. There is something you could do for me. What? My zipper is stuck. On my vest. I'm sure one of your traveling companions could help. Well, they're very angry with me. They get jealous when I'm around strange women. How awkward. Really? So if you just... Uh... It wasn't very hard. No. I'm sure you could have done it yourself. Zip a man and say good night. You are tired, aren't you? So am I.
thanks. You coming back from the waiting? The what? The waiting at the beach. Uh-oh. You like Wagner? Oh, yeah, sure. Super. You can, um, let me off in town. You guys must have been, uh, working late. Moonlighting. Everybody was out there tonight, even the little creatures. I found a lot of them. A lot of what? Beach rats. What's wrong? Nothing. What do you do with them? Do with them? I eat them. That's what I do with them. If you'd like. No, 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 thank you. I, uh, I'm just going to get out right here. You don't want it? No, 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 no. Uh, it's, it's a very nice night to walk. <laughs> Hello, horror fans! David Howard Thornton here, but you might know me as Art the Clown from the movie Terrifier, and you're watching the Dead Vault Horror Show on Chop Block TV's horror network at ButcherMedia.com with the Keymaster Slasher Poe, the very best in horror entertainment. Just take it from this killer clown.
Hello, seekers of experience. This is Pinhead Paul T. Taylor of Hellraiser Judgment, and you're watching the Dead Vault Horror Show with the Keymaster Slasher Poe here on the Chop Block TV Horror Network. So yours is the soul we shall seek out first. Oh, this is Well, my children of the tomb, it looks like this film is definitely a coffin classic indeed. Messiah of Evil is definitely a new coffin classic here, out of the dead vault. So, what are you all thinking of this film thus far? My sentiments exactly. Where's George A. Romero when you need him? <laughs> I do believe the production value would be definitely enhanced. <laughs> but nevertheless, let's get back to this coffin classic entitled Messiah of Evil. Keep exhuming, my ghoulies. I think the hideous things I'm seeing are not imaginary. What are you doing? What is this bullshit? I can't get any stations in. Laura didn't say anything else. here why are they all out there are no stations in this town you can't hear anything can't we go Tom it's not that I care it's just that I'm scared what I don't know I tried to sleep and I fell in and out of half dreams. I remember my father saying that you're about to awaken when you dream that you're dreaming.
Martha. I felt like I was losing control. Losing control? It's not nightmares any longer, but something like a sickness that's still there with the sunrise. I think my body is being taken over by some unspeakable evil that's turning me into... knows him. I don't know where else you go. Arletty, I think you should leave here. That's a great idea. Why don't you both leave? Then maybe I could get a little sleep. said it must have been a mental problem. They had picked up my father twice in town. He was found wandering around before dawn. He never knew where he was, what he was doing in the dark streets. 
And then people reported seeing him on the beach, building a huge sculpture. The tide must have collapsed it on top of him. somebody crying. I looked all over, but I didn't see nobody. I'm poor. Why don't you, uh, go to a film? A what? A movie. Oh, a show. Great. I get to take the car. <laughs> then you two can be alone together. I sat in my father's chair. The mundane scenes around me were of Point June. They were slightly distorted and foreboding, as if they were hiding some message. Just as I knew now, the town was hiding some dark fear. July 21st. My body temperature has dropped to 85. This morning I passed blood again. It's as if the thing that's taking over my body no longer needs human blood.
treasures, the thing that's taking over my body, no longer needs human blood.
soon. Not just with money.
only live a couple blocks from here. We were, we were watching TV when we heard them. They, they came crashing through the sliding glass door, making that, that noise, that, that awful noise. We tried to get the children, but they already had them in the hall. They went after them like sharks. My husband dragged me out, and we ran to some neighbors who had guns. But it didn't stop, and they kept attacking anyway. But he's still there. You've got to help. I, I can't. What's wrong? they killed up on the beach, but you still didn't leave. A little time left. You'll have to go. Tell people on the outside. Warn them that what happened a hundred years ago is happening again. What? Listen. Please listen. He came 
a hundred years ago. A hunter first saw him. He told the hunter that he had been a minister and had come over the mountains with the Donner Party. He passed that horrible winter with them and saw men commit hideous acts. He said that he himself had eaten human flesh, but had survived because he had faith. Faith in a new master. The hunter didn't understand the dark stranger said he was spreading this new religion. <coughs> when they found the hunter, he looked as if he'd been attacked by some kind of animal, half eaten. As he was dying, he told them of the dark stranger. And they assumed he was delirious. When he went into a fit, biting at them like a rabid dog, they shot him. The dark stranger watched the chaos. And he walked into the sea and said he would return a hundred years later to a world tired and disillusioned. A world looking back to old gods and old dark ways. Oh, world. You've got to go now. Most of this town is infected. It's got to be destroyed before the moon turns blood red. And he returns to lead them up the coast and inland into the cities. We can both go. They took me. And they did this to me.
Arletty. Arletty. <coughs> Arletty. Arletty. Why didn't you leave? I came back here to get you. Tom, it's too late.
We thought we must have made it out of the town. And then we saw the first one. They were coming down to the beach as they did every night. To stare at the ocean and went. We could go no further. They were all around, watching us, staring at us, as if we were trapped animals, caught, already bleeding, yet still struggling hopelessly. We hoped to make it to one of the small boats on the horizon. And then we would drift out and head for safety down the coast. He was having trouble with his arm. I had hurt him. And now I couldn't help him. Boats didn't seem any nearer. And the last thing I saw was the setting sun. They hadn't let me drown. They had pulled me from the water. They had prevented my last escape. At night, most of the town was on the beach. They built their fires, not for warmth but as beacons to be seen from the black ocean. They dressed me in an old gown. I was to be offered, and following their prophecy, the moon turned blood red, and the dark stranger returned. He let me go with a story that condemned me, knowing that they wouldn't listen. He was right. I made it back, and they put me here. He told them of a dark stranger, and they assumed he was delirious. When he went into a fit, fighting like a rabid dog, they shot him. It was like the night the moon turned blood red. The red and the moon got up here. Hey. The closer the people no were being really jerked, Lord Hell. crashed into farmhouses and gorged themselves. You can do horrible things. Foreign animals. Folks were shooting around the street a uh, hundred years ago. <laughs> During the day, they let me out with the others. We sit in the sun. And wait, we sleep, and we dream, each of us dying slowly in the prison of our minds. Hold on to love, hold on to love, so the moon above will not turn. How many are they? Don't try to find out. 
There you have it, my friends. Another coffin classic exhumed and locked back into the dead vault for eternity. Once again, I say thank you for tuning in this evening here for the Dead Vault Horror Show. I am forever your cult horror host, the Keymaster Slasher Poe. And join me throughout the week as we exhume multiple coffin classics out of the dead vault. And make sure to tune in to Chop Block TV on Amazon Fire and Roku for all new episodes, my friends. And once again, I say thank you for tuning in. From the depths below, in to the fog we go. Good night, everyone. <laughs> custom horror merchandise and t-shirts contact fearwhatyouwear.com now as well as for customized commissioned artwork contact bradleybeard.com now and get one of a kind art pieces today That's right, boys and girls. It's that time. Get your own limited edition Mummy and the Monkey figurine set. Find them on Facebook. Look for them on eBay. And be sure to watch Fridays at 10. <laughs> 